with all of you. Um, my presentation is about Uruguay and China, of course, it's my work. And this photo is interesting because it's in 2016, on the occasion of the official visit of European President Davide Vasquez to China. And this event is key in the evolution of the political relations between uh, both countries in the short term. And this photo too, it was taken during the one year's visit in February 2018, in occasion of the, the 30th uh, anniversary of the diplomatic relations. Actually, Uruguay signed the MOU of BRI in 2018. And this meeting was regarded as uh, of high importance of, for the Uruguayan government. It's key for this new context of pandemic. And uh, first of all, some introduction in this issue. The historic and the international relations has been marked by a big milestones. The end of the Cold War, of course, was one of those. Uh, the Twin Towers attack in 2001 too. Uh, why couldn't the pandemic be one? But these milestones don't occur an empty and isolated, isolated phenomenon. Uh, the different situation and the behavior of each actor depends on different factors. So the important thing here is understand that the big movements in the structure is a process and the milestone allow us to see it better than before. Scholars in, partic scholars in particular, but the people in general see in China a new powerful actor in the system. And in this context of pandemic, it is timely to pose the question, how could the pandemic modify the international system and what will be the role of China in the new post-pandemic world? Why the new world be centered on cooperation or on rivalities? Is globalization dead and will regionalism resurface? How will the tension between US and China impact Latin America and in which areas? What can Uruguay do in this context? And how is the bilateral relation between Uruguay and China in this context? Which areas are relevant and useful for both and which are the actors and institutions involved? Of course, the medical issues and the aid in this context in pandemic is crucial. The context before the pandemic. With the major presence of China in the international system, the international order is changing. The new role of China rebalanced the world. A significant milestone, such as the fall of the Twin Towers, modified the international agenda, shifting closer to economic issues in the 90s and focusing more on terrorism and security in the new century. This milestone allowed China to increase its relative power in the international arena, but more spe specifically in the South. Global governance became a big issue in the international system now. Even more so, after three specific events, uh, financial crisis in the West in 2008, President Xi's arrival to government in 2013, in, and the BRI proposal, of course. Maybe we have to add uh, here the community of shared future for mankind. I consider that is so important to next uh, and connect the ideas of the BRI and, and this proposal. And of course, the Trump's arrival to the US government in 2018. Since the BRI proposal, Chinese foreign policy has been concentrated in it. And it has become more important today as Xi Jinping um, proposed two weeks ago, the need of addressing the pandemic together and building the global health community and health silk and rope. This topic must be the center of analysis because it's a, about global governance. Meanwhile, the US government has had passive attitude in the international institutions as China increased its presence. The US is systematically retiring from international institutions, such as example, just Pacific Partnership in 2017, Organization the NAFTA, Paris Agreement, UNESCO, Iran's Nuclear Agreement, uh, Human Rights Council, and, and others. For example, the, the constant retiring support, finance and support in the WHO, and maybe the empty, political empty in the WTO.
Despite the new Chinese role in Latin America in the uh, 21st century, the pandemic set, sets a new stage for this relationship and proposed new issues too. It's important to highlight that before COVID, China had three FTAs partners in the region, Chile, Costa Rica, and Peru. Colombia and Panama launched negotiations without concluding yet. Additionally, China had an important presence on the regional level with SELAC Forum. And um, Mercosur, but it's a problem with the clause in, in, in the short term. And of course, the strategic partnership and the BRI MOU signed with several countries, also with Uruguay in 2016. And another relevant aspect, of course, the the aid and the cooperation. We can see here the map in South Latin America and all the, the memberships uh, in the BRI and the uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Uruguay and Ecuador are the only full members in the, in the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, and such as 20 uh, countries stay in, in the BRI and signed the, the MOU. After COVID, this pandemic accelerated the tension between US and China, such as uh, said Gabriel. And adding to existing trade and technology sector frictions, more specifically in the telecom sector, of course, the 5G. And now it is also important to consider the focus of the policies on the institutional architecture. China and US increased their rivalry uh, based on each other's message. But do all policymakers share this view? Xi's proposal called Health Silk and Road is proof that China based its poli uh, foreign policy in the new context in terms of international framework. Not necessary to oppose to, China, uh, to US, but thinking about the new institutional infrastructure created to cooperate and articulate it in the BRI. The US seems erratic in its role uh, in global governance before and after COVID. The elections in the US will probably be an excuse to increase the confrontation to China, with China. In fact, the US position hasn't changed that much. The China issue is still central in the battle for presidency. Meanwhile, the official Chinese position represented by Wang Yi today is cooperation between the US and China. As reality shows, it's not a possibility in the short term. This is an example of Uruguayan donations. The mechanism was in this uh, centrate on concentrate in the sister cities like La Valleja, Salto, El Paisandú, San Jose, and Rocha. And the case of Uruguay, the characteristic of Chinese aid. First of all, I want to, to say something like Latin America. The US attitude in after 9 11 attacking indirectly allowed China to increase its presence in Latin America. In Central America, this is a particular clear in the political dimension. Countries such as Panama, Dominican Republic, and El Salvador recognized mainland China recently. Additionally, China became an important trade partner, of course, in Latin America. And the COVID pandemic intensified the flu, uh, the flow of uh, Chinese aid, and Uruguay wasn't an exemption, of course. And some scholars had named this new medical cooperation as max diplomacy. Uh, a concept that was rejected by the Chinese government, of course. Okay, uh, this is the, the, the part of Uruguay. Uh, how did the pandemic impact the relations between China and Uruguay? What models or mechanism has been consolidated, had consolidated and have new ones be created or are established once being used? We can see different mechanisms in the, in the Chinese aid recently in, in times of COVID. Uh, mechanisms by state by state, or um, I consider that it's important highlighted the sister cities because it's a, um, a institutional built uh, before the COVID and it's used today to, to, to the aid. And it's so important to me. And uh, it's a, maybe a, a, a I focused in, in this point in my presentation. Something, things to, to highlight, for example, the aid significance 
Here you can see this uh, Chinese aid in Uruguay in the mask by sectors. We can see maybe similar things or contributions in the private sectors, Chinese private sectors to Uruguay and the multilevel government in masks, of course, and in diagnostic kits, it's a similar behavior. And then this is uh, the general data. The, the aid is significant, particularly in the case of kits, ventilators, and the thermographic camera is a, a, a high level technology. And the involvement of the private and public sector was significant too. The institutional architecture use was the existing bilateral one, with a special mention of the sister cities. Cases such as La Valleja, Paysandú, Rocha, and San Jose in Uruguay. And in China, Chongqing, Guangxi, Hainan, and Sichuan. Mm. And in the best example of the use of a mechanism built before the pandemic, because all of them donate medical items to their counterpart. And other related Chinese state-owned enterprises were CTE, Cherry, and Costco shipping. Private enterprises, Huawei, Alibaba, and others, and a multilevel governments, for example, Two High City, the Wanxi Autonomous Region, the municipality of Chongqing, and the province of like uh, Weizhou, Wanxi, Hainan, and Sichuan. In the case of Uruguay, uh, I, I talk about, about that, the departments that have signed a sister cities uh, MOU were the main donors. Uh, I say La Valleja, Paisandu, Rocha, and San, jo and San Jose. When it comes to the private sectors, for example, Conaprole, the most important exporters in Uruguay of dairy sector, donated medical supplies to China in February, and other enterprises that have a good relations with the Chinese market, such as Rufor in the forestry industry and Sanfer in, in, that's an importer, don, donated as well. Of course, the Uruguayan donator, donations weren't significant, but the main point here, as the companies note, is the signal of friendship and support that this donation represents. Some conclusions. The behavior, of, the behavior of Chinese aid in the pandemic context in relation to Uruguay was and is based on institutional infrastructure built together before COVID-19. For example, the strategic partnership and the mechanism of sister cities. This is proof that China has worked to build a network with countries in the South, at least for the last 15 years. This mechanism seems useful for the counterparts in times of crisis and represents an opportunity to choose different ways of the global, uh, global South. To Uruguay, it is important because it provides an alternative to dodge uh, this kind of crisis and, of course, an alternative way of development. Finally, this cooperation is not an opposition uh, to the U.S. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Andres. Uh, really, really a good and deep work here as well. Uh, so now it's my turn. <laughs> Maybe some of you already know me, uh, poor you. <laughs> coordinating the um, Center for Chinese Studies at uh, Univers uh, National University of La Plata in the International Relations Institute. And I am uh, uh, sharing uh, the great group of CLACSO uh, with Gabriel and Andres. Uh, so, sorry, I am talking too much as always, and I have to share my screen to... Um, to show you my presentation. Um, I will talk about the effect of uh, COVID on uh, uh, European Union. And uh, um, I will share some uh, observation with you. Sorry, uh, because I'm sharing a drive, so, but I can do it. Mm. Beep, beep. Share screen. Uh, okay. Uh, can you see it? I hope. Mm. Coming? No. Wait a minute. Yes, yes, it's coming. 
it's normal because it's a heavy <laughs> document. Heavy in a mean, I, I mean, it's boring. <laughs> okay, so uh, 